What are ORI struts? Can you explain how, how they're designed and how they're built? Uh, the ORI strut, what we're looking at here, uh, this one happens to be an integral reservoir strut, meaning that it has a reservoir attached to the main body of the strut. We sell it in two different forms. We build just a main basic strut with just the body that you see there. We also offer an option with the reservoir. Uh, the ORI struts are a dual chamber strut, and which means we can pressurize both the upper chamber and the bottom chamber. When we add pressure to the bottom chamber, it controls the body roll of the vehicle. The more pressure we add to the bottom chamber, the more stable the vehicle becomes. So the ORI strut is very different from other coilovers in that respect, where you can control the push-off. What are some other differences between a coilover shock and the ORI strut? Uh, coilovers, um, we designed the strut primarily because of the problem that coilovers have in pushing off to full extension. Uh, they use damping to slow down the extension, but uh, for us that wasn't enough. We wanted to have more stability than that. So by pressurizing the bottom chamber, the struts do not push off to full extension based on how much pressure you put in the bottom chamber. There's a valve here. You can see the bottom chamber valve here and then the upper chamber valve here. So by balancing the pressures between these two chambers, you can control the body roll stability. You cannot do that with a coilover. Right. So besides some of those differences, you've explained some of the benefits that we have of a, uh, a ORI strut over a coilover shock. What are some of the other benefits that one might see in using an ORI strut over a coilover shock? Some of the uh, advantages our customers have reported back to us are that they run quieter. You don't hear the squeak and the banging and the clanging that you do with a coilover. So they like the quietness, they like the smoothness of the ride. Because you can, you can not program these, but you can adjust them so that they uh, can be a very smooth ride or an extremely stiff ride, depending on what kind of driving you're doing. So the customers have reported smoothness and the stability and especially that they can package a ORI strut into very, very small spaces. Whereas a coilover oftentimes has to be accompanied by a triple bypass shock. And we can package all that into a very small area and usually at about one half the weight. So we're talking about uh, improved performance in certain applications, uh, more compact and less weight overall. That's pretty much what our customers like. Uh, the ease of installation, uh, less weight, uh, package them into small spaces, uh, and the advantage that when we do the dual chamber design, as we're doing, uh, our customers do not use sway bars. Many of them completely remove the sway bar and the bump stops. All of this is built internally into the strut. Um, the vehicles that uh, ORI struts have been installed on. Can we install them on any kind of vehicle or is it limited to a particular body style or a particular size? Government regulations will sometimes limit what we can claim. Uh, they have not received uh, approval from the Department of Transportation so highway use run running on the interstate where they are not approved for that although we have customers that do ride them on the highway and on a daily what they call a daily driver. For off-road vehicles in particular, let's say, uh, can I put them on my Jeep? Can I put them on my, my custom-designed rig? What, what are my limitations there? I would say that most of our customers are Jeep owners. And then you have truck owners that will also buy them. Um, probably the best suited market would be for the performance area because they're not a regular shock absorber or spring. These are designed for performance, for going fast, we're going over hills and being stable on side hills and over rocks. I've heard some stuff about a new product you've been launching called a Level It. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, the, the whole name, you can see it here. And we've been testing this for the last eight months and we're ready to release it to the market. It's called the Level It Pneumatic Sway Assist. Uh, it does not replace a sway bar, 
the, or the anti-sway bar as it's uh, more accurately called, the level it for those customers that like to have maximum articulation in the rocks and on the sides of hills, they take their sway bar off because the sway bars tend to push them over in off-camber situations. The level it for those customers will lock uh, the reservoir on the side that is loaded, whether you're in a high-speed turn or leaning three or more degrees to one side. The level it will block the compressible gas volume of the load side of the vehicle, making it more stable, actually increasing the spring rate of the load side of the vehicle. On this, this is a side-by-side, -side, but most of the time we mount these on uh, rock buggies and racers. Uh, we have completely removed the sway bars on this uh, UTV side-by-side and it will run very stable, in fact, uh, as stable as a side-by-side -side with sway bars. But the advantage we get is that this is a reservoir that, or like a sway bar that turns itself on and off. It will be on when you need it, when you're off camber, and when you're riding straight, it turns off so you have very loose suspension. All the wheels, all four wheels can react completely independently of, of the other. Whereas a sway bar, the, the wheels are tied together, uh, giving a rougher ride. So we gain additional stability with the level it in combination with an even smoother ride. Now we've been at King of Hammers here for about a week now. This is coming to the end of the races here. How important is it for you uh, to represent ORI here at King of Hammers? We stay very busy here. When we are at King of Hammers, this is where we get direct input from our customers. They tell us what kind of problems they're having, what they want to overcome. We do a lot of service work here, uh, rebuilding struts, uh, tuning struts. Um, our most fun, I think, that we have at King of Hammers is when we're um, going out into the field with the racers and tuning their struts for the best possible ride so that they will be safe and fast during the races. And we, at the King of Hammers, this is where we learn from our customers. They give us the input that they give us helps us to improve the strut. So what what kind of improvements uh, do we typically end up making after getting this kind of feedback from the customers? Like how does that help make uh, improvements? I would think the biggest improvement is a problem that all the shock manufacturers have had over the years, and that is controlling the heat that builds up inside the shock absorber. As heat builds up, their shock absorbers will fade as the oil gets too hot. Uh, so we have, uh, over the years, over the last 18 years with KOH input, King of Hammers input, we have uh, been successful at controlling the heat, both through the thin fins you see on the body of the strut, the aluminum fins to dissipate the heat, <coughs> and the, the seal materials that we are using and the type of oil we are using. So the input from customers at King of Hammers have helped us to uh, obtain a, or, and design and offer a product that does not get as hot as it used to and it controls the heat and it's very survivable in long distance endurance racing. Uh, we have not had the fade problems for the, when the shock oil gets hot, the shocks will fade, they will lose their damping control, so we do not have that issue with these. Excellent. Now we've seen your product on Jeeps, we've seen it on rock bouncers, on rock crawlers, on about every type of uh, off-road vehicle imaginable here in the United States. But I want to talk about something recently, uh, within the last uh, few years now, you've really been growing with the Icelandic off-road racing and uh, those racers. How, uh, in particular, you've been here with the Cube this year at uh, King of Hammers, uh, running the, uh, the King of Hammers race. Uh, how was it to be with the Cube in, in tuning his struts to, to get an Icelandic off-road racer off of the mountain sides and into the rocks? Very interesting question. We learned a lot from the uh, Formula Off-Road Iceland racers, uh, especially that they like to drive on hills so steep, sideways, that they would tip over any other vehicle. Uh, so the stability, I think that is what they like mostly about the struts is they can be tuned to be very, very stable on a side hill without rolling the vehicle. And uh, of course they are in the air a lot. They have to have softer landings and that helps with that as well. The cube car 
or Kuber, I think they pronounce it, is um, it, it actually was not too much of a challenge. We, uh, the struts that we tuned for him here at KOH, his first time at KOH, and it's the first time ever for an Icelandic car to be competing in this 140 mile endurance race. The struts were fairly easy to tune. Mostly what we had to do is make sure that the car, uh, the, the damping of the front and rear struts would, were such that we could keep the car level in the whoop sections, in the choppy roads. Uh, the Icelandic cars are designed for stability with a low center of gravity, so the struts are even more effective on that type of a car. Um, have you gotten any feedback from uh, Magnus, the driver? Has he given you any kind of a We call feeling? him Maggie. Maggie? Nice. Any kind of feeling on, on his opinion of how the struts were uh, functioning for him? Uh, so far what we have heard from him is that uh, they were great. <laughs> We've heard that uh, he had GoPro cameras running on his struts. They were just running up and down beautifully and he was able to pass some of the other uh, local drivers and professional cars who were using winches to pull them through the rocks while Magnus was able to pull himself just drive around them. So we're, we're extremely happy with that. Fantastic.